Ah, Cho Chang. She was Harry's first love interest. She was a sweet Ravenclaw girl, a seeker on her house Quidditch team, and she... Wait. Wait. And she's one of the most hated characters in the series? So much hate. So much hate. Wow, this fandom really hates Cho Chang, doesn't it? Are you serious? All those comments you just saw were from my comment section of my Life Up video for Cho Chang. And over the years, I've just seen hateful comment after hateful comment come in on this video. All I did in that video was tell Cho Chang's story from a non-biased view, and people sure told me what they thought of her character. I went through the comment section for many, many hours because there were well over 5,000 comments, and I tried to find the biggest reasons why people hate Cho's character. I put together the five biggest reasons why that is, and in this video, I'm going to make a more biased video than the last one and defend Cho Chang, explaining why she's not as bad as everybody says. Also, just a sidebar, it's amazing that I have this database of what fans think about all these different fandoms in my own comment section. It's amazing that fans from all over the world choose my comment section to talk about, debate, and celebrate Harry Potter and every other fandom I cover. It just means so much to me, so thank you, you guys. Keep it coming. I love it. I love how you guys have a place to talk. I love how I have a place to read all of these opinions and actually get ideas for videos like this one. But anyway, now that I've said that, let's get into the video. So let's start with the first point. She cries too much. My comment section was filled with jokes about Cho crying too often. There were people laughing about it, there were people mad about it, and even people saying that Harry had been through a lot of traumas too, but he didn't cry. For my defense of Cho here, I'm gonna paint you a picture. Cho started dating Cedric around the age of a junior in high school. He was older, extremely good looking, popular, was her first boyfriend, and he was a really, really good guy that treated her very well. They spent months getting to know each other and building a relationship. They had been together for about six months by the time the third task took place, which is a long time for a young relationship. Then, with a snap of a finger, Cho was looking at the corpse of the boy she had grown so close to. Just like that, he was gone. Her relationship was over, she had PTSD from seeing his body, and she lost who was probably her best friend. Then, adding insult to injury, everything reported on her boyfriend's death was twisted and confusing. The Daily Prophet and the Minister of Magic reported that his death was an accident, while Dumbledore and Harry reported that he was murdered by Lord Voldemort. Cho of course believes Harry, but it can't be easy having your boyfriend's death be so confusing, so up in the air, and honestly just disrespected. Taking all of that into account, of course this girl is going to cry a lot. She's a young teenager who lost her boyfriend and in an incredibly public way. Everybody at Hogwarts knew she was Cedric's girlfriend when he died. So when she started to date Harry, all of those people who knew she was dating Cedric are suddenly going to judge her for moving on. Because let's face it, that happens all the time in the real world as well. I truly believe that this judgment and this pressure from outside of her relationship with Harry strained her connection with him, even if Harry didn't know it. Just look at what Pansy Parkinson said when she saw the two of them on a date. Potter and Chang? Ugh, Chang, I don't think much of your taste. At least Diggory was good looking. You can't tell me that comments like this don't affect how Harry and Cho's relationship turned out in the end. Also, to those saying that Harry has been through more, I would actually argue against that, at least when it comes to loss. When it comes to danger, Harry definitely has her beat. But Harry's biggest loss was one that he didn't really remember, which is why he didn't struggle with PTSD from his parents' death the way Cho did with Cedric's death. The first real corpse that both Harry and Cho saw was Cedric. And for those saying that Harry saw Quirrell die and saw his corpse, that's actually not true. In the book, Harry was holding onto him so tightly that he passed out from the pain, so he didn't see Quirrell die and he didn't see his corpse. Mr. Crouch? But anyway, seeing Cedric's dead body was traumatizing for both Harry and Cho, but I think it was much harder on Cho. Cedric meant a whole hell of a lot more to her than he did to Harry. Harry saw him as a rival. A nice rival, but nonetheless, a rival. Meanwhile, Cho saw him as her boyfriend and her best friend. This is why Cho was always crying. She was affected far more from an emotional standpoint, which leads to crying. Meanwhile, Harry was affected in more of a shocking PTSD way, which leads not to tears, but to the nightmares he had. So I think Cho crying all over the school is 100% justified when you look at all of this. 
I feel like the only argument you could make where she might have cried too much was after being beaten to the snitch by Ginny. But if you've ever played sports, you know it can get emotional. Me personally, I'm incredibly competitive. I don't cry, but I'll get angry, I'll scream, I'll let my emotions get the most of me, which is exactly what happened to Cho. Also, the whole thing with Ginny had some layers to it. Because one, Cho knows that Ginny is friends with Harry, meaning Harry got a victory from Ginny's triumph. And two, Ginny sort of embarrassed Cho earlier in the book as Cho suggested the name for the DA, saying it should be the Defense Association. Then Ginny swooped in, stole the DA part, and gave a better suggestion that everybody liked better, calling it Dumbledore's Army. I don't know if it's just me, but if someone did that to me, I would definitely want to get revenge on the pitch as well. Moving on to the second reason why people dislike Cho. Harry was a rebound. A lot of people said this one in the comments, and I totally disagree. I truly think that Cho liked Harry before Cedric asked her out, and I believe she would have said yes to Harry if Cedric hadn't asked first. And this is further proved by the fact that she stuck by Harry even when the entire Wizarding World turned on him. She very easily could have done the same, and honestly had way more reason to do so than most, as he returned back with the corpse of her boyfriend. There is no way she would forgive him for that if she didn't already like and care about Harry beforehand. And giving you more evidence that she liked Harry before Cedric asked her out, we see this with her reaction when Harry asked her out. You could see how disappointed she was when she had to say no to Harry. You see this both with the way she talks, her body language, and especially with how many times she said sorry to Harry. Harry, I really am sorry. On top of that, I'm just going to point out that after Harry and Cho did go out and then broke up, she had a rebound relationship after that with Michael Corner. I don't think that a rebound relationship would have its own rebound after the breakup. Clearly, Cho liked Harry from the start, and after Cedric's passing, she still had feelings for Harry from the year before, so she gave it a shot. This was honestly incredibly brave on Cho's part, considering the fact that everybody at the school knew about her past relationship with Cedric. Moving on to the third reason why people dislike Cho, she doesn't like Harry's friends. So many people in the comments were mad that Cho didn't like Ron and Hermione. She calls Ron the tornado hater, and she was incredibly threatened by Hermione. I feel as though the thing with Ron was sort of justified, as he called her a bandwagon fan of her favorite Quidditch team. Quidditch is literally one of the biggest parts of Cho's life, meaning she's very passionate about it, and she's been a fan of the tornado since she was six, so I totally get why she took offense to that. If somebody said that I was a bandwagon Eagles fan, whew, man. But getting back on track, looking deeper at this moment, Cho had another reason to dislike Ron here. She was clearly trying to talk to Harry on his own, and Ron butted in, which just for the record, he's known to do, as he did the same thing to Harry and Ginny while they were kissing in Ginny's bedroom in the Deathly Hallows. In both of these instances, both with Ginny and Cho, Hermione told Ron that he was wrong, and I agree with Cho and Hermione, he was wrong to butt in, and if I were Cho, I wouldn't like Ron much in that moment either. And as for her dislike of Hermione, she's a girl who feels threatened by another girl who for sure has a better relationship with the guy she likes than she does, which can make you feel very vulnerable. On top of that, the way Harry talked about Hermione wasn't great, and again, Hermione told Harry that he was wrong. Saying you want to interrupt your first date to hang out with another girl is not smart. Hermione even tried to fix his mistake by getting Harry to say bad things about her to Cho, which Harry of course didn't do, thus never fixing the situation, leading to Cho disliking Hermione. Cho not liking Ron and Hermione is actually pretty justified when you take a deeper look at it. She sees both of them as obstacles to get to Harry, and even more, sees Ron as a pretty rude obstacle. On to the next point, people say they don't like Cho because she ruined the DA. I think the movies did Cho's character a great injustice, as the film had Cho be the one that ratted out the DA. Even though it later said that Umbridge used Veritas Serum, aka Truth Telling Serum on her. Have you brought the Veritas Serum? I'm afraid you've used up all my stores interrogating students, the last of it on Miss Chen. It still wasn't a good look, and I feel like that was such a small mention that a lot of people forgot about the Veritas Serum part. In the book, though, it was not Cho who ratted them out, but her friend Marietta Edgecombe. Cho had brought, or more accurately, forced Marietta to join the club, and after a few months of going, Marietta got cold feet because her mom worked for the ministry, and she knew her mother would get in trouble if she was caught with the group, so she went to Umbridge and ratted everybody out. Now, you could still say that this was Cho's fault because she forced Marietta to come, but I don't think that's fair. She wanted a friend's support to go to the guy she liked, and honestly, Marietta was a pretty bad friend. 
First, she forced Cho away from Harry after the meeting in the hog's head before she could talk to him, and then went behind Cho when everybody else is back and ruined the club, something that Cho could not have foreseen. The DA falling is not on Cho, it's on Marietta. And the final reason why people dislike Cho, because of her date and Madame Puttyfoot. On this date, she asked Harry if Cedric said anything about her before he died, and then brought up how Roger Davies, who was sitting next to them kissing another girl, asked her out, but she said no because she was with Harry. I'm gonna be honest, this one looks pretty bad, but I have some thoughts. The Roger Davies thing was her getting back at Harry for wanting to interrupt their date to see Hermione, which again, Hermione admitted was wrong for Harry to say and do. It was certainly not the nicest thing to say on Cho's part, and it was a bit petty, but it's understandable why she said it. She was a jealous teenage girl who wanted to make Harry feel the way he made her feel. Now, as for her question about Cedric, this one seems pretty out of pocket, but if you really think about it, it actually shows how desperate and sad Cho's character is. She was not only desperate to know the truth about what happened, because as I said earlier, there were so many conflicting reports about it, but she was also desperate to talk about Cedric's death just in general, because she hadn't been able to do that yet. Her PTSD was awful, she was clearly too scared to talk to anyone else about her grief and sadness, whether that be her popular group of friends, her parents, or the staff, and Cho thought that Harry was her one chance to finally let all of this out because he was struggling too. She was of course wrong to ask Harry this, but hey, everybody makes mistakes. Also, had Harry not had Ron and Hermione to talk to about his grief, this might have been a really good outlet for both of them, but because Harry had already let all of his grief out, it didn't work. This shows how desperate and lost Cho was, and it's not something that should be looked down upon. I honestly think it's something that should strike pity and sorrow into readers and watchers. Overall, Cho was a very sad character, and though she did make one or two mistakes, those one or two mistakes should not be what turns an entire fandom against this character. If you look at how much pity characters like Draco or Pansy Parkinson get when they've done little to none to provoke this pity, it's pretty wild that Cho has such a lack of pity from fans. Cho and Harry had the worst timing possible, not only with Harry being too late to ask her out, but also with the circumstances when they did start dating, as both were pretty broken about Cedric's death, though in very different ways. But, she was Harry's first love interest, and he learned a lot from her. He got the awkward banter, the first kiss, and the first date out of the way, making way for his relationship with Ginny, his future wife. That is all thanks to Cho Chang. Thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can follow me on Instagram to see more of my personal life like my cute dog Loki and some behind the scenes movie flame stuff. I also do similar content on TikTok and Twitter that I do here on this channel, so if you like what I do here, check them out. All the handles are right below me and links are in the description. Over here are my wonderful patrons. If you want to be featured on the next video plus get a few other perks, become a patron today. As always, if you liked the video, hit that like button and subscribe and look out for more great movie flame videos on the way.